Hey everyone, welcome to this week in our series, Let's Go. We all have a next move and that is best taken alongside some really great people. We've already discovered what it means to step into partnership. Now what does it look like to call the best out of one another and send one another well? Here we go. Uh, listen, as we step into this fall, uh, there's some things coming up that we've been talking about this in our whole series. We'll talk about it here in a few minutes, but I don't want us to miss out on a few mechanics. We're in a series right now called Let's Go. And so just to like inspire somebody around you, would you just like stir up some energy, like call on that caffeine that you've consumed this morning uh, and just turn to somebody around you and with like an inspiring, convicted voice, just say, let's go. Let's go. Right, there's places to go, things to do. Uh, and listen, there's just something about someone looking at us, another person like willing to go with us and inspiring us, stirring us up. We're gonna talk about it for a long time. But the truth is, many of us are trying to do this thing alone and that simply is not gonna work. Especially as we head into this fall, we all want to be people who live a life of meaning, a life of consequence. And all of us, through the course of months ahead, are gonna become someone. We're all becoming someone whether by plan or by accident, come December, we will be someone shaped by previous months. But if we're gonna become someone, rather than just be surprised in December, let's just plot a course and let's go. Let's just cheer one another on in the very best of directions, because we've been saying this every single week. It doesn't just take a village to raise kids. It takes a village for all of us. Great people around us cheering us on. I acknowledge that some people don't have that, and honestly, the local church is one of the best ways to find people to journey along with, to plot a course toward Jesus and gather some people along and go together. Hopefully, families are doing that. Hopefully, homes and roommates and those kind of people are doing that, but also, some people just moved here. Some people's friends just PCS or like I moved away or other things. You may find yourself alone. The, the, the truth is we all need people, and the church wants to support in that. And so on September 18th, we're gonna gather up everybody who's looking for people, what you're gonna find is a bunch of people looking for people. Uh, and so I know in a garage door up, garage door down kind of town, it can be hard to find people. There are great people around here. Every time I sit across a table, there are like some of the weirdest people on the planet, right? I'm talking to all of you. And some of the most amazing stories you could imagine in the people that they're becoming, and it's just awesome. So we're gonna try to help people find people. If you need people, it's a place to go. Finally, in the last of announcements before we drive, uh, drop right into the scripture, I just wanna invite you to keep up on all that's going on this fall. So if you have your phone, I wanna encourage you to grab it and send a simple text. Dive in, one word, it's gonna try to autocorrect. don't let it, your phone's not in charge of you, say you're not the boss of me, and put dive in in one word and text it to 94000. Here's what's gonna happen if you do that, you're gonna get about three texts a week. The first one is typically gonna be just a simple prayer that we can all pray together that God would have his way in us and our city this fall. The second is a connection that you don't have to click but you can to a resource. I'll tell you what this week's is gonna be uh, here in just a little bit. And then finally toward the end of the week just some basic info of upcoming events so you don't miss out on anything like a reminder for that September 18th event or the place to find the content for the group study if you wanna do it with your family or a few friends or if you find your way into a life group. Everything you need is gonna be there, so grab your phones, 94000, dive in. Everybody good? All right, let's get out of announcements and let's get into it. If you have your Bible, I wanna encourage you to grab it. We're gonna go to Acts chapter 13 because we're still talking all about partnerships. So one more time, look at somebody and say, let's go. All about partners. Here's our definition for partnership, is that partners go together. Partners go together. It's not just about being together, it's about going together. Yes, we wanna have great friendships. Yes, we wanna have great relationships. People to laugh with, people to eat with, people to enjoy, people to invite into the challenge of our life. But listen, that happens best. God's design for all of us is that we would be going after something that requires more than we can bring on our own. And so we call people to our side and we go after those things together. Like last week we said it this way, you remember the marriage advice from last week, were y'all here last week? Run full tilt after what God is inviting you to run after. Give your full heart to him and what he's inviting you to do. And as you do that, look to your right and to your left and when you find people going the same way, at the same pace, grab them up, they're your partners. They're the people to run with. 
right? And so this week, what we're actually gonna talk about is how do we decide which direction to, ro- to go? How do we think about what God is inviting us to partner with him? What is he calling each of us to do? Uh, and, and then how do we send one another and support one another, even if we don't physically go with them? How do we send people well together? And then how do we come back together and celebrate really, really well? We wanna be people headed somewhere that matters and going after something that's bigger than ourselves, right? There's a lot of times in our lives we just get caught up in the humdrum of life or the bumping along the bottom or trying to survive or trying to acquire and it kinda just starts to center all on us. God did not make us to focus on ourselves. He invited us to something much, much bigger, something that requires more than we brought and something that invites us to become more than we thought we could be. And with this help, we can actually do that. I I do wanna say that many people who find their way into a place like this may or may not be followers of Jesus. Maybe you just love the person next to you and they're important to you and so you showed up to just honor and, and acknowledge them. That's awesome. You can belong here way before you believe, grab a cup of coffee, high five some people, make some friends. You can belong way before you believe. And I think, all the way to my core that the things that Jesus has said are so true that even if you don't point your life toward him, you'll find the truth of these things applied in your life. So whatever it is that you're running after, I think you'll find traction in what Jesus says. And my hope and my prayer is that as you do, it draws you to him because he's the best. He's worthy of all of our attention. I do wanna make a quick note that before we talk about where we're running, it's good that we all talk about where we are headed together. Wherever you may be headed, this is where the people of God are always headed. Jesus' last words, some of his very last words, he says this, as you are going, wherever you go, or like the high school shirt these days says, go therefore, wherever you are going, make disciples, know I'm with you. Make disciples, know I'm with you. Disciples, just a word for someone who takes on a way of life, that we look constantly at Jesus and live in his direction with his help. And so we wanna be those kind of people and help other people be those kind of people. And we don't ever have to be afraid about our lack of strength or lack of wisdom or anything else because God, Jesus is with us always. It literally, what it means is the whole of every single moment. But I just want to note before we go any farther, he didn't say this to individuals. He said this to a group. He said this to people. If anyone could have turned the world right side up all by themselves, it was Jesus and he didn't. He gathered people around him, men and women, and commissioned them, empowered them, trained them, and sent them together to experience all the good of partnering with God. This is where we are going as a church. Make disciples know him with you. Enjoy his presence always. Partner with what he's doing in the world to turn it right side up. And so, especially followers of Jesus, turn to somebody around you and say, let's go. Now, you may be going somewhere else, and there's space for that. You may be going after a promotion or that's a subset of life. You may be going after a health battle right now that you just is like, it is so challenging and you need to rally some people to your side to get through it practically and emotionally. Maybe there's other hardship that you're walking through. Maybe there's a a new opportunity that's emerging in front of you and you're going after that. As you go after those things, these are great opportunities to invite some partners alongside you, to support you, cheer you on, encourage you, challenge you, never let you settle. Or maybe you're just finding your way in the direction of God and we wanna be a great partner and support in that. We wanna surround you with some really great people like we said earlier. God has always, whether you acknowledge him or not, God has always had things in mind for us to do with him. He's always had impactful things of consequence, things that matter, things that call other people and things around us to life to do with him. From the very beginning. From the very beginning, God created people, not just to enjoy creation, though they did, but to partner with him in caring for it and see it come alive and thrive. God has always invited us to his side to say, let's do this together. It's like me and my 10-year-old who put slime down the drain earlier this week. (laughs) All the parents who have ever experienced slime, you just took a deep breath, right? We got slime in the carpet. We got slime on the walls. We got slime on the ceiling. I can think of no good reason slime exists, honestly. <laughs> Yesterday, a child came to me and said, hey, we just put slime down the drain. I'm like, that's a, that's a great plan. I'm so glad you did that. Well, you made the mess. You're gonna fix it. And so me and my youngest head upstairs with a bucket, and we, he learns a lot about plumbing 
in those next 10 or 15 minutes, man. Natural consequences, bro, you're gonna learn some things. The funny thing is, some days I just lose my mind, I'm impatient, I'm a bad dad, and I just, I, I get impatient or, or, or get rude, but this day, sometimes we win. And this day I'm just like, I'm not gonna get upset, we're grabbing a bucket, you're gonna learn, let's do this. 15 minutes later he looks at me and goes, Dad, that's pretty fun, I never thought about that, that was really interesting. And I'm like, this is a great way to buy your way out of trouble, buddy. <laughs> but it's a great picture of what God invites us to. God has so much more knowledge, awareness of how things should work and how things go. And when we accidentally or people around us accidentally turn things upside down or sideways or break things, he just invites us to come alongside and put things right. And he helps us become something else in the process. God has always invited us to partnership with him. In fact, the whole tenor of all of the scripture from very beginning to very end, Richard Foster says it this way, God over and over and over and over and over and over and over is saying, I'll be with you. 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 Don't be afraid. I'll be with you. I'll be with you. I'll be with you. And the implied question every single time is, will you be with me? Will you step into life with me? Because when you do, not only do we get the presence and the power of God, we also get to partner in what he is up to. He's always inviting us to partnership. This is what he accomplished in Jesus. I just wanna remind us, in Ephesians chapter two, it says this, God saved you. Save doesn't just mean like fire insurance at the end of your life, for those of you who've grown up in church afraid of that whole deal. What saved means is put back together, made whole, all the way recreated in the way God always intended, piece by piece put back together. God is putting you back together by his grace, an unmerited gift. He says when you believed, and you can't take credit for this, you didn't do anything anything for this. We don't earn anything, we've been offered everything and we spend the rest of our life just acknowledging that and saying thank you. He says it's a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things you have done. Did you catch that? I know the rest of your life tells you if you want good things, you need to earn them and that's not a bad lesson in a lot of ways. What you reap is what you sow, but not with Jesus. We could never earn our way. He says it's not a reward for the good things you have done so no one can boast about it. He goes on and says this, God is we are God's masterpiece. Like when God wants to show like how amazing and gracious and merciful he is, he says, look at what I've done with all these weirdos. <laughs> they didn't do anything to earn this. I called them back into relationship with me and I'm rebuilding them piece by piece. It's all about him. It says he created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Listen, he calls us not just to be made whole, but to his side to partner with him in doing things that matter, in helping people turn their lives right side up and seeing all of creation thrive, to see things return to the way he always imagined and dreamed that they would be. I can't think of a, a higher calling. I also cannot imagine that any one of us brings everything to the table, so guess what? We need great partners, so turn to somebody around you and say, let's go. God from the beginning, when he spoke you into existence, imagined you from the start, he says, I have good things in mind for you. Not to earn anything, not to prove anything, I just want you to experience joy, God said. I wanna do things alongside you. I'm not sending you away to accomplish a bunch of stuff, I'm calling you to my side, we're gonna do this thing together. Father and son, father and daughter, experiencing, learning, becoming, emerging. He says, listen, I've always dreamed this. And Paul, when he wrote this letter to his friends in Ephesus, he did not say so that I can do the good things he planned for me. He says what? We, in partnership, always together. In fact, when Paul wrote this letter, he wrote it to a church that he had planted alongside some other people, like a guy named Timothy, who many years later would come back and lead that church alongside some really wise people the Bible calls elders, right? And so there's always partnership everywhere permeating all of this. And here's what I don't want you to miss before we get into the details of today, is that partnership with God, always, tell somebody always. And then they're gonna say yeah, but, and you're gonna say no, you're gonna say always. Partnership with God always, always, always means partnership with his people. So can we all just take a huge deep breath? Everybody take a deep breath together. Because people are the worst. <laughs> right? I know I am sometimes, and if you're honest, I don't know how well you know you, but I know me, and sometimes I'm the worst, and so are you, right? People are challenging. 
But it's in that context that we experience God's presence in dealing with their weirdness, in dealing with their challenge, in walking with them and staying with them through failure, we remember God stays with us through ours. And we remind them that God stays with them through theirs. And each of us are like forced to become something better and different, way more like Jesus. Partnership with God always means, always, 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 no exceptions, means partnership with God's people. And so today we're gonna flesh it out in a really practical sense. We're gonna look at the launching of partnership and the celebration of partnership. And I thought we could do this through a really simple image. Uh, how many of you guys have ever played team sports? Show of hands, anybody a team sport at any point? We won't ask you how many years it's been, it's fine. A lot of years for me too. I was also a coach for a little while, freshman football. And here's the image I wanna invite you to. There's a team on the field, they've just come into the huddle, there's a whole bunch of extra players on the side. And so there was this action that whether I was a player or a coach, I would experience over and over and over and over and over. The coach would look at the situation, he would look down the sideline, he would call the number of one of the players or call a player by name from all of those who were attentively waiting to see if it was their turn to contribute. And they call him down and then he puts a hand on his shoulder, speaks something in his ear and sends him out onto the field to partner with some teammates. And then no matter what happens, they face it together and as things go well, they cheer like crazy. You see the image? Three steps we're gonna look at today. A calling, a sending, and a celebration. You'll see all this in Acts chapter 13 and 14. You grabbed your Bibles earlier, it's been a minute. If you put them away, grab them again. Acts chapter 13, verse one. We left these guys that we're looking at, Paul and Barnabas, or Saul and Barnabas, in uh, the town of Antioch. They'd spent about a year there teaching and like serving alongside these believers who are trying to live in the way of Jesus. And it says as they're doing this, something really important happens. In Acts 13, one, it says this. Among the prophets and teachers of the church at Antioch and Syria were this guy Barnabas, Simeon called the black man, or Simeon uh, called Niger is the actual word, and what it means is very, very, very dark skin. Uh, and Lucius from Cyrene, which is actually in modern day Libya on the north coast of Africa, Menaean, the childhood companion of King Herod of Antipas, and this guy Saul, or Paul, he goes by both names. One day as these men were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, uh, dedicate, or a better word is, appoint Barnabas and Saul for the special work to which I have called them. So after fasting, after more fasting and praying, the men laid their hands on them and sent them away. So Paul, or Barnabas and Saul were sent out by the Holy Spirit. Three steps, calling, sending, and celebrating, and all of them matter in partnership, every single one. What I want us to see from this simple story is that calling gets clarified and confirmed in partnership. You can't tell someone what their calling is. Calling is not being voluntold. Calling is something you discern among some people who see you, who know you, who invite the best out of you, listening to what God has in mind for you and his people. But make no mistake, God long ago decided there were good things he had in mind for you to do. Your personality, your position, your wiring, your passions, all of these things position you perfectly to call things alive in Jesus' name. And so at any given moment, we can look across our life and say, God, what do you have in mind for me right now? It may not be the long-term plan, it may just be right in front of us, but calling what God is inviting us to do is always clarified and confirmed best in partnership and in community. I don't know about you, but I can talk myself into anything and I can rationalize my way out of anything by myself. Can I get a head nod? I'm not the only weirdo. But in community, we can listen better than ever to God, and this is exactly what they were doing. They were praying and fasting. Fasting just means to set aside food for a time to give greater attention to God and hear from him, wanting what he wants, nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. It says that they were worshiping, that they had like, worship literally means in this case at least, it means to serve God at a cost to ourself, that we set aside what we desire and pursue primarily what he desires. Notice they were taking steps toward God over and over and over. We said this last week, run full tilt in God's direction, right? And then look to your right and to your left. They were doing this. They were teaching, they were giving, they were serving, they were praying, they were fasting. They were just giving their whole hearts to God. They were what we would call two feet in kind of people. And it's in that context that God gave them direction. That 
uh, I, I gotta say this before I move on, but like calling, what this word literally means in, in the original language, is to call to one side. Do you guys remember the picture of the coach, right? Look down the line, come here, I have something in mind for you. And the beauty of partnership with God is he doesn't send us away from him like a coach sends you onto the field, he goes with us. He says, come closer, come closer, let's do something together. They were in motion already and God said, they were attentive, they were on the sideline, they're looking at coach and God says, listen, you're going in. Because calling is as much about steering as it is about starting. Too many people are looking for the calling on their life, this massive direction before they even take a step. But here's the truth, is that you usually get direction while taking steps. We said this last week, you cannot steer a parked car, right? If you're steering a parked car, you might be a toddler pretending to drive, but you're not going anywhere. God steers us as we go in the context of partnership and community. Paul and Barnabas, like we said, they were in motion. They were going after God in every way they knew how, offering their very best to those around them, serving others, contributing all kinds of steps of being in motion along the way. So this image of a, of a car being steered along the way or a coach calling someone's number is a great picture. A number of years ago, this same thing happened for me. Uh, this church has been here about 30 years, and for most of those years was uh, the kind of the point person for our staff called the senior pastor or lead pastor was a guy named Kevin Oder, and he would help lead the staff, teach the congregation, and all those things along the way. About five years before he was ready to retire, he came to me and he said, hey Drew, when you imagine your future, do you imagine being a defensive coordinator or a head coach? Because for Kevin and I, all things are football. And I said, well, as I look at my history, honestly, I think I serve better as a head coach than a position coach, helping others bring their best rather than trying to bring my best to one area. And he said, great, let's spend the next couple of years getting you ready to do that. And if that turns out to be here, awesome. And if not, no worries, we'll have gotten you ready to go somewhere else and be ready to go. This is what calling looks like. People who see us, who know us, who call the best out of us and can help us get into the game. This is what a great coach does. So let me just ask you, what's been stirring in you lately? As you live in the direction of God, whether you've just begun or you've been at it for decades, what has been stirring in you? How is God inviting you to his side to partner? Where are you being invited to bring the very best of you in the interest of others to call people alive in Jesus? God has something in mind. I don't know if you've been paying attention, I don't know if you've been seeking it or listening for it, but I'm just gonna tell you that to, to find this, to like live the best way in this direction, it's always gonna happen better in partnership. Now some of you are imagining ways to partner with the church, and that's a great place to look. Don't look past the church, but please don't stop there. God has good in mind for your neighborhoods. God has good in mind for your coffee shops, for your workplaces, for your neighborhoods, everywhere that you go. As you are going, Jesus said, stirring up good in us. And so, are you listening to what God has in mind for you? And let me just ask this while we're at it. Who is listening to God with you and for you on your behalf? Who's asking you really great questions that help you discover you and live in the direction that God has invited you? to call all of those passions, resources, opportunities, and positions to be deployed in Jesus' name. We need to be the kind of people, we wanna be the kind of people who are creating fresh space all the time for God to speak and for us to say yes in every way we know how. In fact, maybe you need to look at your calendar and get really practical about clearing some space to listen on your own to God, but also to invite some partners alongside to say, hey, Here's what I think I'm hearing from God. Does that sound right to you? Does that sound like me? And let them call the best out of you. Because there's gonna come a moment where you say yes to what God has in mind for you, and not only is the clarifying and confirming of that important, but people who send you, like that coach who kinda shoves those shoulder pads and pushes you out onto the field, so sending, being sent, is supported best by a great group of partners. Sending is supported best by partnership. There are some things that we would be bold enough to do if we just knew someone was standing with us. If someone just looked us dead in the eye and say, I believe in you, I see this in you, I see God's calling on your life, you've got it, you can't not do this. The world needs your contribution and you can't settle for anything less. 
Man, I want people in my life who are like that. The kind of partnerships who see the best, who grab me by the shoulder and say, you got this, go. We're behind you, we'll be waiting no matter how it turns out. Did you notice this in Acts chapter 13? After they had prayed and fasted, they felt like they heard what God wanted Paul and Barnabas to do. They would be sent out on a year-long journey from place to place telling people about Jesus. But even before they sent them, they prayed and fasted again. They wanted to confirm and be together in this decision. A different place in Acts would say it this way, it seemed good to us in the Holy Spirit. It's that kind of vibe. We don't always know 100% sure, but we wanna listen well, and then we wanna offer our best. But then there comes this moment where it says, then they laid their hands on them, and sent them out. Who in your life just needs you to place a hand on their shoulder and say, I believe in you. I see you, I acknowledge you. God's been inviting you to do this for a while, don't settle for less, I'm right behind you, I'll be here when you get back. Win or lose, pass or fail, whether it goes exactly the way you thought or not, I am with you, let's go. This kind of placing a hand on a shoulder, there's just something really powerful about physical connection. Like eye to eye contact, like something I have being offered to you. As powerful as the thought of God calling us to his side, God is spirit and we don't feel that physically, but this is actually a beautiful opportunity, followers of Jesus, to kind of stand on behalf of God next to your friend and say, I'm with you and we both know God is with you. I want you to feel it, I want you to sense it, I'm gonna give you a little extra momentum as you head out the door and this is exactly what they did for their friends. So let me just ask you, what kind of partnerships do you have around you? Who's placing a hand on your shoulder once in a while saying, I believe in you, I'm with you, you got this, go. Who are the people surround, who's sending you? Who's going with you in a sense? Even if they're not going to your workplace, even if they're not going to your coffee shop or wherever it is, who's like with you and behind you in every kind of way? For me, uh, there's this uh, prayer team I'll tell you more about in a minute, but I feel like one of the callings on my life is to like live this with like the highest degree of integrity to be a disciple maker, to like help people come to know Jesus. And because my workplace is already like full of Christian people, I go to other places during my week and try to do my work there to try to encounter lots of people who don't yet know Jesus and invite them in that direction. But I just gotta be honest, sometimes that's intimidating, sometimes that's scary, sometimes I feel like a weirdo. And so somebody encouraged me along the way, said, hey, get some people praying for you who The moment you send them a text, they'll stop what they're doing even for 30 seconds and pray for you. And I can't tell you how much it means to know that there's this fleet of people behind me when I step into my coffee shop or when I walk into my gym or when I step in to coach somebody who I've been grouping, uh, inviting some people into a group with. It just matters who's going with you. And while we're at it, who are you sending? Who needs you to place your hand on their shoulder and say, you got this, I'm with you. Shoot me a text, I'll pray at the drop of a hat. We wanna see God do things in our lives and I'll ask him with you. This idea is, uh, the word that we think about for this is commissioning. Send people, those of you in the military know some things about receiving a commission or a change of orders to be sent with authority, resource, and people to go along with you. It's that kind of image. And the beautiful thing is when we've done those things well, our partners get to celebrate with us when we win. Partners should expect to celebrate together. When we've taken time to confirm what God's inviting us to, as best as we know, we're never 100%. 55% sure is enough, just say yes and go to confirm our calling together with some others and then to receive like prayerful support people with a hand on a shoulder saying go, then when we come back and say this is what God did, everybody gets to celebrate together. We should expect that if we're trying to partner with God and we've invited his people to go with us, of course there's gonna be a celebration. Why wouldn't there be a celebration? Like after the coach has called a number and sent them out and whoever that kid is, their parent is in the stands like panicking and worried that this is gonna go well and then it does and the whole place erupts, cheering for the very best in everyone. This actually happened for Paul and Barnabas. I I hope you'll read their story. We started in Acts chapter 13, flip over to Acts chapter 14 really quick. Those two chapters represent about a year of these guys' life and there are some epic stories. 
Like in the span of five minutes, this crowd goes from like trying to worship them as gods to try to stone them to death as heretics. And you just gotta read the story. We'll dig into it a little bit more next week. But when the journey is over, they come back to the people who had sent them away, like a player returning to the sidelines. Verse 26, it says, finally they returned by ship to Antioch of Syria where their journey had begun. The believers there, I love this phrase. The believers there, not just the leaders, not just those friends who got listed, all the believers there had entrusted them. Having listened to God, having discerned together and sending one another out, it says they entrusted them to the grace of God. Listen, when you wanna work with God, you're gonna receive and experience unmerited favor. And we're living in his direction. And so of course it's gonna turn out in a powerful way that God would do, they had entrusted them to do the work that they had now completed. And so verse 27, it says, upon arriving in Antioch, they called the church together, reported everything God had done through them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles too. Not only had what they sent them to do got done, but a whole bunch more. And they stayed there with the believers for a long time. When I was in high school, after a football game, we would go to Monocle's Pizza. It was a 25 minute drive. And when we walked in after a win, it was nothing but celebration, rehearsing the stories, and just enjoying having gone to battle together and done the thing that we wanted to do. This is a picture of this kind of celebration story you see there. Who are the people who have participated in sending you, listening and confirming your calling, who are just gonna cheer and celebrate like crazy when you win? When you experience what God has in mind for you as you become the sort of person God's inviting you to become, who's gonna be standing on the sidelines? When you look up in the stands, who's sitting there showed up on your behalf to offer anything they could to cheer you in the best direction. These are the kind of partnerships we want. And while we're at it, whose wins are you celebrating? Who are the people that when they win, you're cheering like crazy because you're standing behind them you're supporting them. This past week, we kinda hung out after a couple of events with some people who put them together, just telling stories of the good that God was up to. Or, um, or like my prayer team, who this week, I got to send them a really fun message. Uh, one of the things that I feel called to is like empowering people, especially Air Force folks, to like look into the scriptures well together and multiply groups wherever they go. Uh, and so I've been doing that for the past couple of years, just one group at a time, just inviting some people, looking at the Bible together, obeying what God has said, like challenging one another to share it with others and see what emerges. Well, from the first group, one of those guys got PCS to uh, Korea. And then about six months later, from another group that we had started, another guy ends up there. I'm like, this is perfect. There's already a guy there. You guys need to team up, and they have. And they've been launching this group that will meet, uh, I don't know, whenever Sunday afternoon is in Korea. Maybe it's already over. But as these guys were meeting, I get this message uh, and I got to send it to my prayer team because these guys, these people, these men and women who've been praying for me have been praying for months and years and often by name for these people who were headed to Korea and the people that they would encounter there, the people that they've gathered together to follow Jesus with and the impact that that may ripple out from there. And so then sure enough, I get this really weird email this past week here at the church. It says, this message is for Drew. He and I went to high school together in Illinois. I haven't seen this guy for like 20 plus years. And uh, you just need to know my hometown is 1,900 people total. My graduating class was less than 70, okay? So the odds of anyone from my hometown being in Korea, not great, okay? He says, at any rate, I'm not on social media, but I recently connected with some folks here uh, at this Air Force base in South Korea and that are members of Canyon Ridge. I figured I'd try the long shot to reach out to Drew. Feel free to drop me a line. Glad to hear you're doing well, but here's the line. You ready? Wanted you to know that you and this church are impacting people here in Korea. How cool is that? <laughs> that some kid from a town of 1900 who I haven't seen for decades 
experiences the good of just one yes after another by a number of people, a long list of people, a guy named G, followed by a guy named Ryan and his buddy Alex, it's this guy named Kent who would invite this guy in, in, into his home named Russell who would join over there and this thing starts to get stirred. You can't draw this stuff up, you can't make this happen, but here's what you can do, you can celebrate like crazy and you're all like, dude's on stage throwing Gatorade on himself like he won the Super Bowl. No, 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 no. I'm telling you that the fruit of tens of people praying over years and one person at a time saying yes in Jesus' direction stirs up things that go far beyond what we could have imagined because some people discerned a calling together. They said yes in a direction. They got in motion and allowed their lives to be steered. So much of that has nothing to do with me. I just got to be one little piece of the story. But here's the important thing. I invited a bunch of people to partner with me, and so they're cheering like crazy because that's fruit of what they have invested in, even though they've never seen most of these guys face to face. This prayer team of mine spans many states, multiple countries, but they all are celebrating what's happening in Korea because we're all partnered in it together, and we're just stirred up and expecting God to do more and more and more. This is the beauty of partnership. When you listen to God for the calling he has on your life, when you allow some people around you to say, yes, absolutely, I am hearing the same thing from God, I see the same thing in you, your whole story has led up to this moment, you have to do this, the world needs your contribution and they put a hand on your shoulder, they pray to the God who stands with you and goes with you and they shove you on the way out the door and says, we will be here, we'll be standing with you, send us a text, we'll drop everything we're doing at the drop of a hat because we want to see everything God has in mind for you to come about in your life. You need partnerships like this. I need partnerships like this. And let me just say, if you're not living in a direction that demands that kind of partnership, you need a bigger vision for your life. God has bigger things in mind for you. If you're pretty sure you can accomplish everything that you're about on your own right now, you need bigger goals. Because God has invited us to nothing less than turning the world right side up in his name. And you and I are not up for that task. But you and I together, with God's spirit and his people behind us, absolutely are. And so let me just invite you right now. Let's not be people who are like, oh yeah, partnership's a great idea, let's go. No, 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 for real, let's go. Grab your phone real quick, here's what I want you to do. Or something to write on if you wanna be old school. Remember paper, those are good times too. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to call to mind one or two people who if at any moment you sent them a text asking them to pray for you, they would wholeheartedly, willingly, and generously say yes. They would stop mid-conversation because they love you that, most, that much. At least two people, write their names down. And don't stop writing names until you run out of ideas. For real, I can see you. I can see some of you are not doing this, okay? Piece of paper, look at my eyes, let's go. God has good in mind for you. God has a calling on your life that you need support to clarify well. And you're gonna need the encouragement and the challenge of some great people around you. And those people are dying to celebrate God showing up in your life. They can't wait for the moment that they've stood with you and they get to cheer. Like, listen to my team, I just sent them a message. I said, how has this prayer team mattered to you guys along the way? That is a recipe, that is not what I'm looking for, stand by. One of them said, it allows us to be on mission and obedient to his calling together. We get to be a part of God's calling for you. They're, ta they're talking to me. It says we've been connected with people we don't even know because of your willingness to allow us, did you hear that? To allow us to pray for you, right? I bet there's somebody in your life that if you put your hand on their shoulder or they asked you to pray for them, you'd be like, yes, of course. Listen, let's just humble ourselves for a minute and ask them to do the same for us. Or like this friend, I love what she said. What this prayer group means to me is a chance to participate in what God is doing in your life, Drew. When you need prayer, you ask. And as I read what others write, I'm encouraged as well. You catching this? She's a part of what I'm up to. She's encouraged by others. When you celebrate, you share, and I begin to celebrate too. When you invite people to pray for you, you invite them to encouragement and celebration. 
It bonds all of us to what God is doing. It reminds me that we are meant to do life together. Over this past year, it has given me boldness to ask others to pray for me. And then she quotes me. Here's one of my favorite quotes. I told her, hey, get your own prayer group. This one's mine. (laughs) And here's why. Because she knows people that I don't know. And more people need to be partnered up in this. You need a prayer team. I bought you tons of time. How many names do you have? Put a two in there if you got at least two, okay? Anybody got five, 10? Take your shoes off if you need to. Don't really, that's gross. (laughs) Start rallying people to your side. Invite them to help you clarify and confirm what God is inviting you to do. Invite them to send you out in Jesus' name, to not settle for just a work week, but a a commissioning to be a part of all that God has in mind, to stand with you as you raise your family and raise kids of consequence who will have a significant impact in Jesus' name on the world around us, wherever God is calling you, that they would stir you up, go with you, and they could celebrate all along the way. Hey, remember I told you earlier you could text uh, dive in to 94000? On Wednesday, we're gonna send you a blog with step-by-step advice and messages to be able to invite people to pray for you. Don't miss out on it. Just send the text if you didn't send it earlier. And you can click on that on Wednesday. It'll give you step-by-step to help you get started with a prayer team. But let me give you one quick step. Here it is. If you don't know what to send people, you got your two names? Everybody got two names, right? Send them this message. You can just use my words. Just take a picture and send the picture. Hey, I'm inviting some people who are important to me to start praying for me. Would you be willing to pray for me when I send you periodic messages? Just take a picture, send it to your friends. Start now. Don't wait till later, don't wait till after lunch. Start now, invite some people to pray for you. Get in motion and God will steer you along the way. Because every single one of us needs really great partners. Everyone needs to be living. All of us are invited to live a life of consequence that is more than a match for us, but with the right partnerships, we can lean in well. All right, everyone, so this week, let's look across our partnerships, calling the very best out, listening well to what God has in mind for us, and going with by praying and supporting one another along the way. If we can support you in any way, uh, head over to canyonridge.org. You'll find everything you need to know along with a way to get in contact with us. If this was helpful to you, share it with a friend, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We'll see you soon.